As you see it now, down 13% from 2013 to 2016, an estimated half a million people could lose coverage if the Affordable Care Act is rolled back. So how do you keep some of the provisions that are popular? Coverage for people with pre-existing condition, coverage for kids under the age of 26. How do you keep that and still get rid of the law as you personally have pushed to do? It's interesting when you, you ask that question, it's a good one. Tom made a good point. The decisions that are being made are covering everyone in the health care system. And those two issues in particular, those having extended coverage to the age yep. of 26, those with pre-existing conditions, these existed before the implementation of the Affordable Care Act, which has turned out to be, unfortunately, anything but. So those were issues that needed to be addressed. They still do. We attempted to fix that problem with a, what turned out to be a much bigger problem. That's not been the solution. The system is failing, there is absolute agreement that we want healthier outcomes. Earlier you made comment about folks talking about policy and in PowerPoint slides and things that begin with the letter P except for one, which is people. This is about people. It's about individuals. It's about members of Kentucky and other states and individuals in America who need access to quality health care. Republicans and Democrats alike, people with and without expanded Medicaid, all want to find a solution. This idea that anyone is being kicked out or kicked off has never been seriously considered by anyone. This is something that we are looking for a solution on. Governors are at the forefront. You make the point, Governor, about Medicaid expansion, and this is something that you have promised to sort of pull back in your state, despite the fact that a lot of people in your state, the people, as you're talking about, uh, get coverage under Medicaid expansion. So if you roll back Medicaid expansion, how do you pay for something to put in its place, block grants or whatever, in order to help people get the access that you think is, that you say is important? Now, the comments I made from the very beginning is that I was going to get rid of Connect, which was the Obamacare exchange at the state level. We have, in fact, gotten rid of it. There are people who still think it's around because they don't even miss it. We transferred people from our state exchange, which was created at $330 million of cost to the American taxpayer. So to absolutely no effect, really, at the end of the day, it turned out as an enrollment tool. Now everyone's on the healthcare.gov exchange. During the last open enrollment period, we just transitioned people. Nobody lost their coverage. Nobody even misses it. There are some who still say they don't want to get rid of it because it's working so well. It's gone. Other than for state, other than for company uh, plans, it doesn't even exist for individuals anymore. So to that end, it's important to understand what we're talking about. Just coverage without a commensurate health come out, you know, out based uh, benefit in health care is of no value. In other words, just covering people doesn't help them become healthier. We want people to have healthier outcomes. That's what we're wrestling with. Congress is wrestling with it. Myself and other governors, Republican and Democrat, met yesterday with leaders in the House and right. Senate to specifically discuss this. And so I'm encouraged by the fact all the right people are at the table. They're talking about this. We're mindful of the fact that people come first, and we need to come up with solutions that help individual people stay healthier, get healthier, and have healthier outcomes. Governor, you talk about people wrestling with the with how to make this happen. Some conservative congressmen are as well, and there's a couple of them that have come out against the draft plan that has been circulating around Congress. I'm thinking of Mark Meadows, chairman of the conservative House Freedom Caucus, Congressman Mark Walker. We just learned this morning also that South Carolina Republican Mark Sanford has said he cannot support this current plan. So how do you get people like that on board? I think the idea that we're discussing what was a leaked draft is irresponsible. It's irresponsible journalism. It's irresponsible on the part of those in elected officials' I would push uh, status back on that, that are Governor. talking this about it. This is a draft it. plan that's been circulated around as possible proposals for how to implement something that the president ran on for 18 months and that a lot of Republicans in Congress ran on for 18 months as well. Do you disagree Again, with what some of the proponents of in this draft As you plan? said, that is possible. It is a possible right. sure. uh, draft. But the point is, there are many possibilities. We wouldn't still be having these discussions if that was definitive. The fact that it's out there is healthy in some respect because people okay. are weighing in on it, but it is not the president's plan. That's important to understand, nor is it the congressional plan. It was a draft of a plan that people were working on, and it will continue to be fine-tuned in conjunction with conversation between the House and the Senate, conversation with governors, conversation with the president and his 
his administration and Secretary Price. It is a work in progress. I think it will end up with a better result. The important thing to understand is this. The existing system is collapsing. Humana just announced they're pulling out of all the exchanges. I spoke with the CEO of another major national health care provider who I don't think has yet announced it. They're going to be pulling out. The system has failed. We cannot allow people to have no access to health care coverage. And so Go. conservative Republicans are going to take the charge on fixing the mess that was created by the previous administration. Before I let you, Governor, uh, let you go, rather, as you know, your Democratic predecessor, Governor Steve Bashir, is going to be giving the uh, rebuttal, you could say, to President Trump's address, likely to talk about exactly what we've been talking about, health care, but from a very different perspective. Uh, do you think he's the right choice to deliver that Democratic rebuttal? I, I, I don't know how deep into the barrel they had to dig before they came up with that choice, but all the best to them. Here's what you're going to hear him say. You're going to tell him that it was a raging success. He's going to tell them that it was a raging success in Kentucky. It's been a disaster in Kentucky. It really has been an absolute disaster. The cost is prohibitive. The number of providers has been limited. Half of our counties only have a single provider right now, and we hope that that continues. He will use terms like you're entitled to your own uh, opinions, but not your own facts. But the facts are that it is a financial disaster in Kentucky, and nothing he says to the contrary can refute the facts. Governor Bevan, thank you very much for joining us this hour.